Hello and welcome to part two of the representation of organic compounds video. In the last video we talked about the Lewis structures, Kekulé structures, condensed structure, and von Line structure for ethanol and pentane. And just a reminder for the von Line structure for ethanol, we've got CH3, CH2, and OH. Again, for the bond line structure, you don't have to draw lone pairs or bonds, but I recommend that you do. So there's two lone pairs on this oxygen and then a bond between the oxygen and hydrogen. And for pentane, we have a five carbon chain. So for pentane, when I start drawing that, we've got carbon number one, carbon number two, and three, four, five. So there's our pentane, which is an alkane. For this video, we're going to dive into a couple more complex structures. For the first one, we're going to look at 3-methylbutyne. So butyne rather than butane. So if it was butane, we'd have a four-carbon chain. So butane with four carbons would look similar to pentane, except we'd only have four carbons. So this is one, two, three, four. So this is butane. With butyne, we have an alkyne or a triple bond at carbon number one. So starting out drawing this structure, carbon number one, which is this carbon right here, has a triple bond to carbon number two. And then carbon number three has a methyl group on it. So we've got one, two, three, four carbons in our chain. So you could say we've made butyne, or this is the methyl group on carbon number three. So we need to add one more carbon here. So now we've drawn the bond line structure or skeletal structure for three methyl butyne. Again, we've got carbon number one, which is triple bonded to carbon number two. And that's single bonded to the third carbon. This third carbon has a methyl group on it. And we need to have a fourth carbon, so we actually have our um, butane equivalent, or our four carbon chain. For the condensed structure of this molecule, this carbon right here has three bonds visually that you can clearly see attached to it, but it also has a hydrogen bond attached to it. Sometimes it's better, like I said, with the oxygen that you clearly show that bond. If it's if it's a carbon hydrogen bond, you definitely don't need to draw it, but this is a relatively acidic proton, so it's not a bad idea if you go ahead and show that one. Um, so for the condensed structure, we're starting with CH, and that CH right here is bonded to a carbon. That carbon's bonded to a carbon and another carbon, but there's no hydrogens attached to it. So we've got essentially a triple bond with one hydrogen and a single bond to another. So this carbon already has four things around it. So that means our next carbon here is attached to an H. And then at the end, we actually have two methyl groups. So in the, both of those methyl groups are attached to this carbon. So one way to draw this condensed structure would be the fact that we have two CH3s attached to that CH. So I'll put that in parentheses and say we've got two of those attached to the CH. So this would be the condensed structure for 3-methylbutyne. For 3-methylbutyne, the Lewis structure and Kekulé structure are the same thing because we don't have an oxygen atom or another atom with lone pairs on it um, that we can choose to show or not show. So for these structures, these are both going to be the same thing. So let's start out with the hydrogen attached to the carbon of the alkyne functional group. We'll show the three bonds attaching this carbon to the next one. This carbon doesn't have any hydrogens attached. So right now we're at this carbon right here. That does have a single bond to the next carbon. And this carbon has a hydrogen attached and a methyl group attached. So we've got CH3 there and one more carbon.
And the nice thing about these two structures is they clarify the um, butyne. So it clarifies the four carbon chain where we clearly have a methyl group on carbon number three. So we've got carbon number one, two, three. There's our methyl group. There's the final carbon of the carbon chain. For the next structure, let's add some, some complexity. Let's go ahead and do a ring structure with an alkene in it. So for that, let's do a cyclohexane ring. And we'll put an alkene in there. So that actually means the name of the compound is now cyclo. Hexene. For cyclohexene, when thinking about how this bond line structure relates to the condensed structure, it's a good idea to go ahead and fill in the gaps and think about where the hydrogens are. So on this carbon right here, with the double bond, it's essentially attached to two carbons plus another carbon there, so three total carbons, which means that it's attached to one hydrogen, so that carbon has four things attached to it. For this carbon here, I can see it's attached to two carbons within the ring, and that carbon has two additional hydrogens attached to it. So going around the rest of the circle, we've got two hydrogens on this carbon, two on this carbon, two on this carbon, and one on that carbon. For the condensed structure, rings aren't usually drawn as a condensed structure, but I thought I'd throw this in there just for practice anyway. So let's start with this carbon, um, and we'll go around the ring, this way, so this is carbon number one, carbon number two, we'll go around the ring that way until we get to the end, and then I'll show you how to connect them with a condensed structure. So starting out, we've got CH, and that is attached to another CH, and that's double bonded. You can include the bond in there if you want. I think sometimes it's better to show that. CH, and then we've got CH2, and we've got one, two, three, four of those. Um, I'm going to put three in brackets and then draw the fourth just so we can show how they're connected. Um, so we've got CH2, and we've got three of those. So we've kind of accounted for this one, this one, and this one. So now we'll draw that one, CH2. And then we want to show that this carbon here, so let's say this is carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, five, six. So carbon number six is attached to carbon number one. And this is carbon number six. This is carbon number one. So one and six. So what we could do is basically draw a single bond representation where this is attached to show the ring structure. All right, with the Lewis structure, that's actually a little bit easier in this case to draw because we're actually going to just simply draw the ring structure. Um, so this carbon has two hydrogens attached to it. So I'm starting at carbon number six right now, and I'll keep going around the ring. So I'll just draw, go ahead and draw the carbons. There we go, and then this carbon has a double bond. That carbon, carbon, double bond is there. We've got one hydrogen attached to that one, one attached to that one, and then we can go ahead and fill in. For all the rest of our CH bonds. There we go, so there's the Lewis structure and Kekulé structure again of cyclohexene and again the reason why these are the same is because you don't have any functional groups within them. So hopefully that helps and hopefully you've made some connections between some of the types of carbons that were introduced. So the hybridization for this carbon here is SP, the hybridization for this carbon here is SP, and then these three carbons right here are all sp3 hybridized. Within the cyclohexane ring, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon are all sp3. 
And these two carbons, the carbons associated with the double bond, are both sp2 hybridized. All right, thanks for watching. And again, feel free to uh, ask any questions you have, and I'd be happy to discuss those. Talk to you later.